Hello, welcome to today's video. Now, this one is how to say no to a role. Now, of course, you shouldn't have to say no, but sometimes things do happen, things pop up, or, you know, unplanned things happen. I just wanted to go through reasons why it's okay to say no to a role, and at the end of the day, you need to feel confident and happy and excited going into a project. Now, a little disclaimer, of course, firstly, if there's any problems, queries, questions, you should firstly go through the production, the company, whoever you're corresponding with. Because if, for example, you feel nervous or not okay with something specifically, you should go through them first before doing anything. It's always good to clear up any questions or queries. And you just might be able to talk things out with them and figure out a plan that makes you both feel comfortable and still happy with the project. And yeah, because it's always good to find a solution and you know, you both want to be happy and excited about it. So yeah, firstly, you should do that because otherwise you don't know. You don't know if you don't ask. Now, I'm basing this all off if you've auditioned for the role and you know the basics of the outline of the story, the plot, and you've just most likely read a couple sides or a couple pages of the audition script. And as I said, you have a rough outline of what the story is and what your character is, does, and you know, what happens. In the overall arc but this is a specific bit you haven't read the full script yet this is what I'm basing this on so this can often be thoughts that you have once you've read the full script first one to go through is you're not comfortable with the subject or the context of the script so now you've read the production and your role and what you know inquires in your character you may not actually agree with the views of the portrayal of the character. This can happen as, you know, you as a person may have your own specific views and thoughts for a certain subject or a storyline, and this may not align with the character. And I will say this, there's nothing wrong with having your own beliefs and ethics of what a person can do, what a character can do. You know, and there's nothing wrong with having your own views and beliefs of what a person says or does, that's, you know, that's just being human. Because at the end of the day, I feel that when you're portraying a character, the most common thing, even if they're so far aside from who you are as a person, is trying to discover the reason why they are doing it. If you can understand this fundamental of a character, often, for me, if I'm able to find it easier to find that connection between us two, for then, for myself, to be able to have, like, an authentic portrayal and you know make it me and them but if you truly can't put aside your views and beliefs and you really don't agree with what the character is doing and you don't believe that you could portray this authentically or just have the connection or you know the willpower or happy to portray it then that is okay because yeah if it doesn't sit right with you and you really can't put this aside from you as a person and taking this as an acting role, then it's definitely important to have this conversation with the production and, you know, maybe just try and understand why the character does that and just try and have this conversation. If you can't, it's okay, you know? There will be someone who can connect with that character or find a way that they can bring that character to life and it sits okay with them and it's all right if it doesn't with you just let them know. The next one is with certain intimate scenes. Now of course this should always be disclosed, 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 no that's not the word, yeah it's disclosed. It should always be put down in the details within applying for the production, you know, they do have to say and state that there will be intimate scenes and often they will give you a rough or a general outline of what is involved, whether it's kissing, hudding, Hugging, hugging, you know, just intimate scenes with your partner. It should normally state this, but they can't write everything that is labelled within the casting breakdown. And hypothetically, you may read the script and originally you agreed that it's okay to do certain intimate scenes because, you know, you're like, oh yeah, I can do that. But once you actually break down and see the specifics of the scene and how it leads to A to D, whatever the alphabet you want to get to but you know if it's just what you weren't expecting or it's a bit too detailed and graphic for something that you're comfortable with or have done or can do 
then it's okay. You might be, for example, okay with doing a makeout scene, but you're not comfortable with doing a sex scene that shows a lot more of your body and skin. Or it may have implied that it's a nudity scene, but it's actually a lot more skin and stuff that you're not comfortable with. So it's okay if you didn't fully realize this sort of thing. Or, on other terms, you thought you'd be okay with it, and then when you actually thought about it, and you saw, as I said, literally in the script of what you will be doing with another person, or people, I don't know, you actually realize that it doesn't sit okay with you, and you don't actually believe that you can do it. I think there's a big difference between feeling that nerves and slight uncomfortable of like, oh, this is daunting because it's gonna be a big challenge, compared to, this freaks me out, I can't do this, I really don't feel comfortable and happy and don't want to be on this production or on that set to do that scene, then there's a clearly a big difference and which one is the right one, you know? And only you can discover this, you know? No one else can tell you what you feel comfortable with. At the end of the day, you need to be true to yourself and how you really feel. What is your gut instinct telling you of I feel happy doing this with the character, you know, it feels like the character might do this and it makes sense, or nah, this is ick, <laughs> I don't want to do this, I feel really uncomfortable and not happy, then yeah, it's, it's a very big thing and the last thing I'm pretty sure they want is you to agree with it just because you think that they want to hear you say yes and then you get on set and then you have a breakdown or you just can't do it and at the end of the day, wasted everyone's time and effort. So it's better to say now at the front before it gets all the way down the line. So yeah, it's okay if you're not ready to do that sort of thing. You don't have to do that as an actor, remember that. It's up to you what you do and don't do. Next one is personal reasons. Now I don't really need to go into depth for what this means. You probably already know what it means. And you know, sometimes life just gets in the way and it's unfortunate and timing can be really shitty. But sometimes things pop out out of the blue, out of nowhere. And yeah, you just can't rearrange, you can't reschedule. Because as much as obviously for me, I see obviously my career as being extremely important. If something personal in my family life, home life, like, personally in my own body and head whatever if something's really not good or there's been such a specific moment for you to not be able to be there or make those dates that is okay but i will say rule of thumb is tell them as soon as you know because try to consider that there's so much work that goes into creating a production and how much time they've spent setting up and getting ready prepared for those film and dates and coordinating all these people to be okay and available on that date it's better to tell them sooner than later that you won't be able to do it and if this does happen i would say when you're letting them know tell them as much as you can that you feel comfortable with sharing i think it's important for them also to understand why you're not doing it and you know whatever the reason may be try and explain it as much as you can for them to hopefully realize and you know empathize that is the word but for them to realize that you're not just trying to flake out and make an excuse and you really do care about the production it's just you can't be there and i'm i'm sure they will sympathize and i've had it many times not many times but i've had it before when there's been a genuine situation and i have explained as much as I could, thoroughly as I could, and they were so understanding and rearranged and rescheduled or, you know, we just parted ways and respectfully wished each other best. Things do happen, and yeah, just, just be honest, I think. Next one is scheduling. Now this one isn't very good when you already know the dates that you were supposed to be available for this project and you can no longer do it. I'll give you what I normally do. If I say yes to a project, I commit to that one. Of course, yes, we're all applying to a million jobs and sometimes they all, always the way, they always end up filming exactly the same time period, the same month. And even though sometimes they might say, we're filming between July and August, and so is the other one said July and August, but in actual fact, they both want to film at the end, the last weekend of July. 
type. It does happen. But what I would say is once you find out for the first one of what the film and dates are and when you're not available, tell the other one straight away again. Let them know as soon as possible because more than often they will try and reschedule and work around your schedule because it's the nature of the industry, it's the nature of our business, you know. It's all up in the air sometimes. But I try to stick to my rule of whatever I've said to yes first, that is what I commit to. And if another project that I've applied for then gives me the role and says, we're only filming on this date or dates and you need to be there, I will then have to respectfully decline because I've already committed to another role if they can't obviously move the dates. And yes, this can be so frustrating and it sucks because it always happens, always happens. But you know, you have to take responsibility of what you've already said yes to and commit to that because you've already, yeah, you've already committed to that. You should think of, you know, your representation of who you are and how you work in the business. And I'm sure that they will understand. And if they really do want you, they can hopefully try and reschedule it and then you get win-win. This does happen, I'll just say it again. Talk to the production, say the conflict has happened and hopefully you'll be able to come to a resolution. But if not, when I've had this problem personally before, it's always been quite respectful and they completely understood and of course it's unfortunate and it does suck. Yeah, it happens and at least you've let them know as soon as they can and they can cast someone else. Oh, little tip for this one actually. This is something that I've started to include more so recently within the past year or so. I'm not going to take credit for this. I have had this advised to me by other friends, loved ones, because me personally, I like to cram everything and say yes to everything and then stress out because I can't do everything or things might collide and plans change and I just become a massive stress ball. So, the thing to do is, especially for bigger productions, their dates are normally set in stone and you can't say no to them. Unless you're this big star and you have that kind of level that you can say no to or can change their schedule around, good for you. Like, we're all working to that point. But when you start from the bottom, working your way up, you do have to compromise and you do just have to go, yep, I will say yes to it and just work around that. That might not be the best mentality, but it kind of is what it is sometimes. If obviously you don't have anything going on. Anyway, so they ask for your availability and they say, can you schedule off Monday to Wednesday because we're going to be filming? You go, okay, don't plan things for the Thursday and Friday because the likeliness of things to overrun, schedules changing, filming schedules, they might now want to film your date on the Thursday and Friday. You don't want this conflict. It's the most stressful thing and it's horrible because it sounds brutal, but in all honesty, they can probably recast you like that. You know, there's so many people that are willing and able and have the capability of doing the role as well as you, maybe better, not better. You are great. But yeah, you don't want the possibility of you've been there Monday to Wednesday, not filming anything, just waiting to be called on set, and then find out that they've overrun and they weren't able to film your scenes for whatever reason, and they now need you for Thursday, Friday, and you're like, oh, I've just booked this short film on these days, I can't do it. It's, oh, you do not want this. It's horrible, and I don't want you to be in that situation because it's not nice to let, especially someone else down, and then come across as the person who's like, can't do it. Of course. Yeah, sometimes things clash, especially on big productions, they always end up filming the same time and sometimes things happen, but most often than not when you're kind of at my stage, when you're, you know, we're on the same path. When you're kind of in this bit and you can control it and it's not, you know, a break and roll for you and this is the big opportunity for you, this production is the thing that you're most passionate and love and this is a once in a lifetime moment right now, try and give it time and maybe book out the next week or no other projects so it gives you a bit of leeway of time. I was quite long-winded, but I hope you get what I mean. But yeah, just give yourself leeway of dates because it's so common for these productions to run over. Like, 
for example, last year, I was pretty much only supposed to be on set for like, I don't know, like a weekend or a week. I only booked out for a few dates. And I ended up being there almost nearly every week for a certain amount of days for almost like a month or two. Just because, you know, that's the life of film. That's what, that's what happens in film. And it was a massive blessing for me because fortunately I didn't have anything else going on at the time. But imagine if I did have other projects back to back in that time, like, oh, it would have been so stressful. And yeah, it's not fun trying to plan, especially if you're like, I don't know, I don't know, you're up in the Midlands and then you have to be all the way down south and then you have to be in Wales and then you have to be back in London. Like, it's so stressful trying to organise your travel and you don't want to burn yourself out or risk being unsafe on the road when travelling, especially if you drive in. It's just, you don't want to burn yourself out unless you don't have to. So yeah, if you can, try and give yourself a bit of leeway in case things run over and plans change. That's all I was trying to say. <laughs> I waffle, man. Ooh. I waffle a lot. So, they are my main tips for today of, well, not tips, but they're my views of what I feel are kind of reasonable things of saying no to a role or ways of trying to work around it if you're not happy and comfortable. And of course, I will say this, if you are fortunate enough to have an agent or you're with equity, for example, you're with a union that is there to support you as an actor or performer, I would say it's always good if you really don't feel happy or comfortable talking about the reason or the situation for whatever reason it is, I would say ask them to do it because that is their job. They are there to help support you and make sure that you are happy at the end of the day and again, if it's one of these reasons that is very reasonable and, you know, just a valid reason why you don't want to do the role anymore or you changed your mind and you don't feel comfortable and happy and you don't have the passion to do it anymore, they are able to do that also on behalf of you in a very respectful way. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, you don't want to burn any bridges. You don't want to be that person who's always flaking out on projects just because you change your mind like that for no reason. That's not what it is when there's actually a valid reason and oh yeah, you just change your mind because you don't feel passionate about it and it's not what you visioned anymore. Yeah, it's always nice to have them to be able to say it on behalf of you in a, as I said, in a more professional way. If you don't, hopefully the things that I've kind of mentioned about are possible things that you can say in a polite way in an email and, you know, just explain what it is, explain where you're at and I'm sure that they will understand. And if they're not, then maybe, you know, you got out on something. But of course, don't screw them over. It's, it's not about that. Just because you change your mind, you don't want to do it or can't be bothered. No, that's, I personally think that's not a valid reason. If there's genuine reason why you don't want to do it, yeah, it's okay to say no. All I'll say is just be considerate about their time as well and what they've put into this and what they've put into you. And the fact that they saw an opportunity in you, that they thought that you could portray this role, the best out of everyone who replied is incredible. And just be respectful and be honest. And I'm sure that they will appreciate that. Just yeah, give them as much time as you can and yeah, that's what I think you should do. <laughs> but try not to stress too much about it, just be truthful with yourself, what is your gut telling you, what's your instincts telling you and roll with that. And on that note, I'll leave you with one of my favourite quotes from Denzel Washington because he's incredible and I think it's such a valid point that you should listen to. So I'm going to play it now quickly. You don't have to compromise yourself. Yeah. You know, if there's something you don't feel good about, then don't do it. The most important choices I've made w was to say no. And I've said no many a time to, to films that I just didn't, especially early on, that I just didn't feel comfortable with. Uh, they... But yeah, that's it. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if there's anything else you'd like to watch, please let me know. But if not, just make sure you give it a like and a thumbs up and leave me a comment, say hello, what you enjoyed. But yes, 
Hope you have a good day, good evening, wherever you are, and take care. Goodbye. Like me when I do self tapes, I'm like, thank you. I don't know why I do that, but I think it's just because I feel awkward. Anyway, that was random. Bye. <laughs>